Hello everyone. Today we are going to be talking about the times that you feel rushed on set. Um, so I'm hearing many actors inquire and ask in the community about what to do when you feel pressured on set. So you may have experienced that quite a bit. Um, getting your scenes at the last minute, getting your lines changed at the last minute, um, you know, having different directions from the DP, from the director, um, like having no rehearsal, having like, oh, we've covered the other actor and it's time for lunch or it's time for the end of the day. And so we can only cover you one time. And so there's this whole pressure on you to get your scene and your close up in like one shot. Um, maybe you come in on set and you're a guest on a show that's been around for a while. And so there's that pressure because everyone knows each other and you're just coming in and no one's really introducing you and it feels like odd. And so there's pressure to fit in right away. There's pressure to know what's going on, to kind of, you know, be comfortable with everyone. And that can be a lot of pressure on your performance too. Uh, I'm reading from a list that I'm, that I'm seeing from people who connect with us. Um, yeah, sometimes you're also feeling like you're getting too many scenes in one day, right? Like they are like pressing it into your schedule. Like there's so many scenes to shoot, they're late and it's all falling on your lap and you have to do so many scenes in one day. And that's a lot because you're going to have to change sometimes timeline. You're going to have to change your emotions. You're going to have to change so many things. And that's a lot on, on you and even physically. Yeah, sometimes there's a lot of time that's taken for the tech, for the crew, for all the others. And um, I'm hearing a lot of actors complain about the fact that like, oh, they take so many time for the setups and the lights and the sound and all of that. And then there's really no time for us to discuss with the director, to rehearse, to 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 really take the time to flush out the scene and to explore it and to find some insights into it with the rest of the actors and with the director. And that puts a lot of pressure on you because it means you have to deliver right away. Um, and then just the general, you know, like you're feeling that everyone is stressed out uh, from the moment you come in, you know, they rush you in a trailer and you're going from hair to makeup and get dressed and, you know, hurry along and they bring you to set and then you have to wait for two hours and then it's your turn and everyone's stressed and, da, 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 and you've been waiting for so long and now it's your time and there's no time and everyone is pressuring you at the same time. And so that's not easy for you to either. Sorry. And so I get it that, you know, it's... Uh, actually an endless list of pressure on a set. There's a lot of people, so there can be different types of, of pressure. And it's very frustrating for you because you're acting and you have a job and you really want it to go well. You want to enjoy it. And you want to be in a space where um, it can be fulfilling for you and that you can make art, right? And if you're feeling the pressure, it's stressful. And if you're stressed, you're going to close up. And you're not going to be able to do your best to open up and to really deliver what you know that you can be um, capable of delivering. And um, yeah, you want it to feel great. You want to make art, but the pressure is preventing you to do that. And so you may have tried a lot of things already. I hear a lot of actors are you know, taking so many classes and training to improve and get better and get faster with lines and get more confident and get more resilient and more strong. And that usually doesn't work, right? Um, you'll find yourself in another situation with a different type of pressure or a new pressure or an ego pressure or something that makes you scared and everything you've worked on goes out the window. So um, I think what I would like us to do today is to kind of shift your perception on what is actually happening. Um, and instead of seeing it as there's a lot happening on set and it's all pressuring me and then I'm kind of stuck and there's no way I can do my best and it's kind of their fault because they are pressuring me. If you stay in that narrative, there's no way for you to find any power or for you to get out of that loop, right? It makes you a victim, it makes them the mean guys and there's no result that's possible. And you've tried getting stronger and faster and more confident and it doesn't work. 
Um, so what I'm going to offer you is to actually see if that is really what's happening. Is really, is there pressure applied on you? Is that what's happening? And of course, if I'm offering a shift of perception, that's, um, I'm going to suggest that that is not what is happening. And what I'm going to invite you to consider for a minute, you might not want to, and it might be annoying to consider this, but let's play for a little bit and try this on. Um, so what I'm going to say that's actually happening is that it's the ego part of you that is being pressured. It's not actually the part of you that can make art. It's your ego that's being pressured. So let me know how this lands, right? You're not just ego. You have a heart, you have a soul, you have a body. You um, are a human being. You are energy, right? You're an artist. And your ego is usually something that you don't really want to take over. The thing is that you've been conditioned to exist through your ego. You haven't been conditioned and educated to actually nurture who you really are, your truth, your freedom, your emotions, everything that's going on inside of you, that truth, the one that may be different than your neighbor, than your sister, than another student at school. You have been educated, programmed, wired, conditioned, call it whatever you want, indoctrinated for the very rebellious ones, um, to behave. You have been indoctrinated and conditioned to um, think a certain way, to feel a certain way, to eat a certain way, to go to the bathroom when you're told at school, not all the time. Um, you've been conditioned to behave like others and like the authority tells you. So our educational system is based on this. There's an authority. Here's you. You don't know anything. The authority knows everything. The authority will tell you what to do. If you don't behave as the authority tells you, you'll be blamed, punished, humiliated, whatever. And therefore, you'll feel unsafe, unloved, unvalidated. So you learn the lesson. And you learn to behave as the authority tells you to behave. The parents, the school, the culture. Because the consequences are too hard to pay. So the way that you're shaping yourself as you're growing up with this authority threatening you is that you're kind of, if you want to make it through your childhood, you kind of have to submit to that authority, right? And that's your ego. So the authority tells you that you need to be a certain way, behave a certain way, please others, do as you're told, sit down, be quiet. If not, you will be punished. So your ego is kind of raised to defend itself, to protect itself, to attack, to build its own identity because it doesn't have a chance to actually, you don't have a chance to actually just be you. So you kind of have a very wounded ego because of the conditioning that you were raised into. So what happens is that when things are happening on set, it's not pressure. It's just the things that are happening on set. There's 200 people, 20 people, whatever. It's a big team of people. There's different agendas. There's the script. There's the light. There's the shots. There's the sound. There's so many things that need to happen. It's a collaborative process. And everyone is doing their best to make it happen from nothing, right? So when that is happening, if your ego is mostly what you're running on, which is mostly the case for most of us, because that's how we've been conditioned. Again, we haven't been raised to be our true and free self. We've been raised to fit, to belong, to be like others, to become like others, to think like others, to feel like others. So we have no real say, uh, space for the true self. So when that's happening on set, you have no real chance of staying open. Your ego is going to have to fight back because it feels threatened again, just like it was when it was little. There's an authority, there's a th set, and it's telling you what to do, and it's telling you when we're shooting, and it's telling you here are your new lines, you gotta learn them. So it brings you back to that very vulnerable place where you just had to take everything in. 
and you had to submit to it. If not, it was dangerous. You couldn't really be just open, truthful, freely thinking, freely feeling, purposeful, really being you in your heart and in your soul and just taking it in. It's your ego that feels the pressure. And then your ego starts to panic and and tries to blame. Because if you're not going to blame them, you're going to feel guilty. You're going to feel bad about being stressed. So it just turns into a battle of your ego against the team, against the industry, against the situation. But you're unable to take responsibility for it because you're not able to feel freely and you're not purposeful. The way this happens when you're actually free, which means you have done the work of undoing all of the conditioning, of soothing your ego, of deconstructing the conditioning, the programming, the wiring. When you have undone all of that and you get yourself back, you become your own authority again. That's how you were born. You were born as your own authority, as a true being, as a soulful being, as a divine being. And you are your own authority. You're here on this planet because you know why you're here and you know what you're doing and you know who you are and what you're wanting and who you're being, right? That's when you're your own authority. When your own authority, your safety is inside. It doesn't depend on an authority. And so when pressure or circumstances on set come at you, you're able to really take them in. It's just energy and you're pure energy and you're taking them in and you're making something with it. So you don't close up and your ego attacks or defends or protects. You stay open because you've done the necessary work of recuperating yourself, of claiming your truth back, of claiming your freedom back. So when you're a free, soulful, heartfelt being, open, purposeful, present, you don't need confidence. Confidence is only to look good in front of others. In our community, we never work on confidence. It's such a shallow, low vibration thing to aim for when you can have presence. If you're truly in your body, in your heart, in your soul, you don't need confidence. You have yourself. You can just be whoever the hell you want to be, whoever the hell you're feeling to be in that moment. And so when the circumstances are, happen, are happening around you on set, if you're rooted in purpose, if you're working and being your character from a place that matters to you, to your soul, to your heart, because that's how you've worked on it. And not, it doesn't matter to your ego, whether you look good or not in the character. You're really doing it for deep, soulful reasons. Then all of the circumstances that are happening can be integrated in your performance. It's just energy that's coming. So you want to make sure that in order to not fall into that loop of feeling that there's too much pressure and it stresses you and it's not your fault and there's nothing you can do about it, but therefore you can't really perform at your best. If you're finding yourself stuck in that loop, make sure you do the work of undoing and moving through your conditioning. You have not been conditioned to be you, not the true version of you. You've been conditioned to fit to belong, to please, to be liked, to be good, to be right. That's the world we live in. We don't live in a world where we raise kids to be themselves. We don't live in a world where we honor humans and beings, little beings for what they are in all of their beauty, in all of their emotions. We're in a world that praises the opposite. You know, good children, they behave really well, they're right. That's the world we live in. And it doesn't work for art. It actually doesn't work for fulfillment either, right? So if this makes sense to you, if it, if it resonates, if you can feel that you've been there and looping and you want out of it, let us know. Um, we have some free resources for you in the link in the bio or in the about section. 